Buddhist cuisine. Buddhist cuisine is an East Asian cuisine that is followed by monks and many believers from areas historically influenced by Chinese Buddhism. It is vegetarian or vegan, and it is based on the Dharmic concept of ahimsa, nonviolence. Vegetarianism is common in other Dharmic faiths such as Hinduism, Jainism, and Sikhism, as well as East Asian religions like Taoism. While monks and a minority of believers are vegetarian year-round, many believers follow the Buddhist vegetarian diet for celebrations. Vegetarian cuisine is known as sushi, vegetarian food, chunsu, pure vegetarian, zaikai, lent, fasting food, in mainland China, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore and Taiwan, Duche in Vietnam, in Japan, Sashil Yumzik, temple food, in Korea, J in Thailand and by other names in many countries. The dishes that comprise Buddhist cuisine in any given place will be influenced by the general local cuisine. The origin of Buddhist food as a distinct sub-style of cuisine is tied to monasteries, where one member of the community would have the duty of being the head cook and supplying meals that paid respect to the strictures of Buddhist precepts. Temples that were open to visitors from the general public might also serve meals to them and a few temples effectively run functioning restaurants on the premises. In Japan, this practice is generally known as, and served at many temples, especially in Kyoto. A more recent version, more Chinese in style, is prepared by the Obaku School of Zen, and known as, this is served at the head temple of Monpukuji, as well as various sub-temples. In modern times, commercial restaurants have also latched onto the style, catering both to practicing and non-practicing laypeople. Most of the dishes considered to be uniquely Buddhist are vegetarian but opinions and restrictions on the eating of meat, and whether it should be prohibited, vary among sects. When monks and nuns who follow the Theravadan way feed themselves by alms, they must eat leftover foods which are given to them, including meat. The Pali slash Sanskrit term for monks and nuns means one who seeks alms, the exception to this alms rule is when monks and nuns have seen, heard or known that animals have been specifically killed to feed the alms seeker in which case consumption of such meat would be karmically negative. The same restriction is also followed by lay Buddhists and is known as the consumption of the triply clean meat. Additionally, the Pali Sutras where this rule is set forth tell of the Buddha refuting a suggestion by his student Devdatta to include vegetarianism in the monastic precepts. In the Mahayana tradition, by contrast, acceptance of the Pali Sutras is contested and several of the sutras that comprise the Mahayana canon contain several explicit prohibitions against consuming meat, in one case saying one who eats meat kills the seed of great compassion. Japanese Buddhist sects generally believe that Buddha ate meat. All Japanese Kamakura sects of Buddhism, Zen, Nichiren, Jodo, have relaxed Mahayana Vinaya, and as a consequence, vegetarianism is optional. Tibetan Buddhism has long accepted that the practical difficulties in obtaining vegetables and grains within most of Tibet make it impossible to insist upon vegetarianism, however, the leading Tibetan Buddhist teachers agree upon the great worth of practicing vegetarianism whenever and wherever possible. The monastic community in Chinese Buddhism, Vietnamese Buddhism and most of Korean Buddhism strictly adhere to vegetarianism. Still, both Mahayana and Theravada Buddhists consider that one may practice vegetarianism as part of cultivating Bodhisattvas's paramita. In addition to the ban on garlic practically all Mahayana monastics in China, Korea, Vietnam and Japan specifically avoid eating strong-smelling plants, traditionally asafetida, shallot, mountain leek and allium chinense, which together with garlic are referred to as wuhan, or five acrid and strong-smelling vegetables, or wusin or five spices, as they tend to excite senses. This is based on teachings found in the Brahmajala Sutra, the Shurangama Sutra and the Lankavatara Sutra, Chapter 8. In modern times this rule is often interpreted to include other vegetables of the onion genus, as well as coriander. The origins of this additional restriction is from the Indic region and can still be found among some believers of Hinduism and Jainism. Some Taoists also have this additional restriction but the list of restricted plants differs from the Buddhist list. Alcohol and other drugs are also avoided by many Buddhists because of their effects on the mind and mindfulness. It is part of the five precepts which dictate that one is not to consume addictive materials. The definition of addictive depends on each individual but most Buddhists consider alcohol, tobacco and drugs other than medicine to be addictive. Although caffeine is now also known to be addictive, caffeinated drinks and especially tea are not included under this restriction. Tea in particular is considered to be healthful and beneficial and its mild stimulant effect desirable. There are many legends about tea. 
Among meditators it is considered to keep the person alert and awake without overexcitement. In theory and practice, many regional styles of cooking may be adopted to be Buddhist as long as the cook, with the above restrictions in mind, prepares the food, generally in simple preparations, with expert attention to its quality, wholesomeness and flavor. Often working on a tight budget, the monastery cook would have to make the most of whatever ingredients were available. In Tenzo Kyokun, instructions for the Zen cook, Soto Zen founder Ahe Dogen wrote the following about the Zen attitude toward food. In preparing food, it is essential to be sincere and to respect each ingredient regardless of how coarse or fine it is. A rich buttery soup is not better as such than a broth of wild herbs. In handling and preparing wild herbs, do so as you would the ingredients for a rich feast, wholeheartedly, sincerely, clearly. When you serve the monastic assembly, they and you should taste only the flavor of the ocean of reality, the ocean of unobscured awake awareness, not whether or not the soup is creamy or made only of wild herbs. In nourishing the seeds of living in the way, rich food and wild grass are not separate. Following its dominant status in most parts of East Asia where Buddhism is most practiced, rice features heavily and is a staple in the Buddhist meal, especially in the form of rice porridge or kanji as the usual morning meal. Noodles and other grains may often be served as well. Vegetables of all sorts are generally either stir fried or cooked in vegetarian broth with seasonings and may be eaten with various sauces. Traditionally, eggs and dairy are not permitted. Seasonings will be informed by whatever is common in the local region, for example, soy sauce and vegan dasha figure strongly in Japanese monastery food while curry and tuong, as a vegetarian replacement for fish sauce, may be prominent in Southeast Asia. Sweets and desserts are not often consumed, but are permitted in moderation and may be served at special occasions such as in the context of a tea ceremony in the Zen tradition. Buddhist vegetarian chefs have become extremely creative in imitating meat using prepared wheat gluten also known as seitan, kalfu, or wheat meat, soy, such as tofu or tempeh, agar, konyaku and other plant products. Some of their recipes are the oldest and most refined meat analogs in the world. Soy and wheat gluten are very versatile materials, because they can be manufactured into various shapes and textures, and they absorb flavorings, including, but not limited to, meat-like flavorings, while having very little flavor of their own. With the proper seasonings, they can mimic various kinds of meat quite closely. Some of these Buddhist vegetarian chefs are in the many monasteries and temples which serve allium free and mock meat, also known as meat analogs dishes to the monks and visitors, including non-Buddhists who often stay for a few hours or days, to Buddhists who are not monks, but staying overnight for anywhere up to weeks or months. Many Buddhist restaurants also serve vegetarian, vegan, non-alcoholic or allium free dishes. Some Buddhists seek vegetarian on the 1st and 15th of the lunar calendar, Lenten days, on Chinese New Year Eve, and on Saint and Ancestral Holy Days. To cater to this type of customer, as well as full time vegetarians, the menu of a Buddhist vegetarian restaurant usually shows no difference from a typical Chinese or East Asian restaurant, except that in recipes originally made to contain meat, a soy chicken substitute might be served instead. According to cookbooks published in English, Formal monastery meals in the Zen tradition generally follow a pattern of three bowls in descending size. The first and largest bowl is a grain based dish such as rice, noodles, or kanji. The second contains the protein dish, which is often some form of stew or soup. The third and smallest bowl is a vegetable dish or a salad. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.